this is Sung and I'm the Principal and Director of Sky Academy and if you have made it this far through the integration episode I want to say congratulations we've made it we've completed integration and I want to now just quickly wrap things up not quickly but I just do want to wrap things up concisely um, and go through everything that we've done in the integration chapter all right so basically this is my integration summary or this is our integration summary I should say so basically we started off by saying that integration is really about looking at it gives us a way of looking at the area under a curve which might not be able to present itself towards finding a, the area of a curve or to, to find the area of it um, by using shapes, by using polygons like um, uh, like squares and rectangles and triangles, etc. And so integration gives us a way of finding the area under that curve. And basically the notation for integration is that that sign there represents the integral or the sum of a whole bunch of little um, narrow rectangles that are added together, each of width dx, between the um, the boundary a and b for the function f of x, um, the area under which goes towards the x-axis. All right. So that's basically the notation to represent the area. Okay. It's the integral from a to b of f of x un, um, under f of x to the x-axis, um, and that is the the notation for that. Right? And when we looked at integration, we actually worked out something pretty phenomenal. Even though integration concerns itself with finding the area under a curve, right? we actually worked out that it is the opposite process of differentiation, of which differentiation of which is concerned with finding the rate of change of a function or the gradient function of a curve. Okay, the gradient of the tangent of a curve. Okay, so um, differentiation is 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 looking at finding the gradient function of a curve. Integration is finding the area under the curve, and we worked out that they're actually opposite processes. To undo differentiation, you integrate. To undo integration, you differentiate. Okay, and this was basically the first fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Which was quite a um, uh, uh, a beautiful discovery in the time. Okay. Then we looked at the difference between a definite integral and an indefinite integral. And do you remember what the definite integral and the indefinite integral were? The definite integral is basically the area between two set boundaries. The boundary A the limit of which is written on the bottom and the boundary B, the limit of which is written on the top, right? And the integral of a function, of a, the, the, um, the result of a definite integral, right, is the primitive function of that function with B substituted into it minus the primitive function with a substituted into it. Okay, so that will give you the area under a curve between a and b. Okay, and that's what we call the definite integral. The indefinite integral, on the other hand, gives you a general rule or a general function, all right, called known as uh, which is exactly the same as the primitive um, or the reverse of the differential the antiderivative of a function, okay? But this time, the difference between an indefinite integral and a definite integral is that you don't have upper and lower limits. And because you don't have your limits, what we need to remember when we integrate an indefinite integral is to add c, okay? Good. The next thing that we did was we looked at approximation methods or approximation techniques for finding the area under a curve where a curve could not really be integrated or it wasn't practical to integrate, 
Okay, and the two methods we looked at, the two approximation methods we looked at, were the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule. Okay, and I looked at how to do that. Okay, there are formulas that go with that, but I haven't put that up on the board. And then we looked at areas below the x-axis, and we looked at the difference between areas under a curve or bounded by a curve and integrals. Right, um, and we know, and basically what I said was that the area, whether it's above or below the curve, an area bounded by a curve is always going to be positive. Whereas an integral, if it's above the curve, will be positive, and if it's below the curve, will be negative. Sorry, let me say that again. If it's above the x-axis, it will be positive, and if it's below the x-axis, will be negative. So the area bounded by a curve and the x-axis, if if it's above the x-axis, it will be positive. If it's below the x-axis, it will be negative. Right? So we need to take that into consideration and we need to be able to read questions carefully. So if a question says find the area bounded by a curve, what you need to do is consider which areas are above and which areas are below and make sure you find the absolute values of the areas below before you add. Okay, and that will give you the total area bounded by a curve and the x-axis. Yeah. Um, if you're finding the integral, then you don't have to worry. What it will do is it'll take away, subtract the areas below the curve because they will automatically be negative in nature. Okay, if you are just finding the integral. Okay, so you just need to be careful of those type of questions. We then looked at areas between two curves. And the area between two curves is given by the area of the top curve minus the area underneath the bottom curve, all right? Which basically is the integral of the top curve minus the integral of the bottom curve between the limits where they intersect, yes? So you need to find the points of intersection, the x-coordinates of which will be a and b. And we also noted that um, the difference of the integrals is also the integral of the differences, okay, of the, of, of the difference between the curves. So we can either um, take the two curves, integrate them separately and subtract, or we can subtract the two functions from each other and then integrate, and both will give you the same answer. Then we looked at areas bounded by the y-axis, and for that, we need to make x the subject and express x in terms of y, change the limits so that they're reflected, um, so that the limits are um, the, the y-coordinates, um, a and b, of the limits of the, um, of the integral, and then integrate with respect to y instead of with respect to x. And that will give you the area bounded by the y-axis as opposed to the x-axis. And finally, what we did was we looked at volumes of solids of revolution, and we worked out that to find the volume of a solid of revolution, you actually square the function, integrate, and then multiply by pi. Okay? And that gives you a really good overview of all that you need to know in this particular chapter, all right, the integration chapter. Thank you very much for watching. I'll stand to the side now so that you can have a look at everything that I've got up on the screen. Thank you.